What's up everybody? Pumpkin here. So today on stream I decided to try a deck that isn't necessarily new deck. Um, Phil Evandrol is a leader that usually shines sometime during the meta. Uh, at the very beginning of the meta it's kind of unplayable because typically the way you want to play Phil Evandrol is you want to play an engine deck. An engine deck is very good when Detlaf is meta. Well Detlaf kind of stop seeing a ton of play so the full all-out uh removal meta has kind of shifted away we still have removal decks right ethnic control is still quite good uh like crack control is okay um but yeah i tried some phil evangel today and it did really well like better than any other squatel list i played in crimson curse i climbed to 25 47. Uh, i was really hoping to hit 25 50 but it got to the point where i could not find a game uh, i just could not find a game. There were no games to be found um, because nobody was at that MMR to queue into. So, yeah, Phil Evangel's pretty good. It's really strong. Um, one of the biggest issues with Phil Evangel in the past has been uh, round one. If you lost coin flip, it meant you lost the game unless you played Witcher um, because typically you'd fall behind on tempo and you just lost the game. Um, but because Witchers are basically unplayable, uh, that's not as much of an issue anymore. Um, so... Just like any other Phil Evangel deck, when you win coin flip and you go second, you play three garbage bronzes or like a smuggler and like two garbage bronzes, such as, I don't know, agitators, dragoon, skirmishers, uh, and then you pass and you go into a long round two. Uh, and then depending on how they play, you either, um, I, I almost always play Phil Evangel in round two. Very, very rarely do I not because this deck does really, really well in the long round that I don't mind losing like two to three points in round three. Um, yeah, so if you lose coin flip and you go first, what I typically do is I turn one TA. I smash tactical advantage on an engine. Uh, the engines that I usually go off on are Mahakam Defenders and Triampor. Uh, I prefer Triampor in round three, so if I have a defender, I'll play it on defender on turn one. Uh, pull up my volunteers if I'm able to. Play something like a smuggler or an agitator and then get out. Um, if you're worried about your opponents having a lot of tempo in round one, do not play agitators because... <laughs> they're really slow. It's a two. Yeah, don't play agitators. They're, they're too slow. Um, in terms of the list, it's a pretty straightforward list. The only card in here that's a little iffy is Weeping Willow. It's like a Skaggs inverse. It's okay. Um, it's a little harder to buff because agitators don't boost it, but you do have Philavandral, you do have Cersei, you do have like King of Beggars slash Smugglers to boost it. You do have Ithlin. I think it's an okay card. If you don't want to play this card, it's fine. Um, the name of the deck is Philo. Willow might cry or weep if you take him out. Stupid pun. Um, you can replace him with, like, uh, Pavko if you want. Pavko's a good engine. It's fine. Um, it, I, I've been liking the card. It's, it's okay. It's not incredibly good, but it's not bad. It's an extra... You get to double up on the value if any smugglers or king of beggars procs go on it. So, eh, it's fine. But feel free to drop it. Um, the only card in here that's abnormal, I guess, would be Great Oak. Um, this card's pretty good. Every single card here stacks on the melee row other than uh, Ida and Agitators. And Agitators, you really shouldn't be playing in round three with Oak. Um, but I mentioned this when the card was revealed. This card should work really well in Phil Evangel. And it does because um, a lot of the times your opponent will start pushing you really hard in round two. Uh, and Great Oak kind of seals the deal because it's typically like a 12 to, I don't know, 15. I, I guess it could be 16. Um it's a really powerful play. It's a really, really strong card uh, in the deck because when they do bleed you, you can use this to secure the round and punish them for bleeding you um, because a lot of the times the engines are a little on the slower side. So your opponent's always like three or four points um, ahead of you and then your engines start to catch up and then your opponent plays like an eight point like power card and then you're a little bit behind and you slam like an oak for like 12 or 14 points uh, and then your opponent starts to panic because you're now ahead with engines ticking. So now they start like freaking out and then you just secure a free card. Um, so Great Oak, really strong card. Um, I'm not gonna go through every card because it's a pretty straightforward list. Great Oak is good. Uh, Ithlin, okay, I'll talk about Aquavis. This is kind of a weird card. It's not an engine while on Earth what I play. Um, because it is an engine, kind of. It's an engine in the sense that if your opponent doesn't remove it, it gets a ton of value. Not in the sense that uh, it needs a lot of turns to get value, which is really good in this deck. Um, because what I found when playing a Dana deck is I would have hands in round three with like eight engines, which in theory is really good because they kill the first like five and then the last three live. Except the problem is engines need turns to like get value, whereas Aquavis doesn't. So Aquavis is like a really strong 
engine finisher, if that makes sense, because you play your other engines to get value, and then they get removed, or they don't. If they don't get removed, you just win the game. If they get removed, it's okay because you have Aquavis, and you play Aquavis, and it's like a 10 to 15 point gold card. It's just a really, really good card. Love, love, love Aquavis. Very strong. Um, yeah, I mean, in terms of round three, my finishers are typically, my last three cards are going to be like Oak, a Big Skaggs, and Aquavis. And I'll play Aquavis either second to last or third to last, depending on if they have a large unit for me to skag. Anyway, Gabor, strong card. Very good if your opponent bleeds you. Weeping Willow, talked about a little earlier. You can drop it if you want. It's just powerful uh, because of hand boost. Trainport, good card. King of Beggars, good card. Ida, you could drop Ida, but uh, Northern Realms is running um, the Ale card that boosts. It's also very good against Dana because every Dana list runs some form of Crushing Trap or uh, Mantis. And it allows you to boost your Mahakam Defenders and get them ticking again. So very good card. Sursa, good card with hand buff. Good card, good card, uh, good card. This is here for Neckers against Monsters. You could switch it, but there really aren't any better fives. Uh, Mahakam Volunteers, good tempo in round one. Uh, pairs well with uh, Defenders. If you turn one T8 Defenders, which I almost always do if I have it. Uh, Dry and Matron. This is just another engine. It's a good card. It gets good value. Um, what's nice is it's small on uh, the... It's three, like the, the base strength is low, which means King of Beggars, assuming you don't have Skirmishers or Agitators in your hand, King of Beggars will boost this every time, um, which is really good because it means you can start pumping up the Dryad Mansion so that when you play it, it's like a four or five. Uh, so very, very good card. Um, also do note, it boosts Defenders. So what you can do is you can play... Let's say you have a smuggler on the board, you play a dryad matron on the board, it boosts the uh, defender. You can, or the smuggler, you can play the defender to the right of the matron, and the matron will boost it, and then the defender will get plus one on itself um, naturally. So it works really well with defender. Dragoon, just a good card. Agitator, good with dwarf. Skirmisher, good with dwarf. Yeah, I went over every card again. Whatever. Um, basic game plan, once again, if you win coin flip, so you go second, play three cards, get out. Smash fill around two. Uh, proceed from there. If you lose coin flip, you need to play a large engine. Uh, typically, I go defender into TA or um, tree import into TA. If you have none of those, you can do like smuggler into TA or king of beggars into TA. Yes, it sucks if they have Geralt in their opening hand. There's not much you can do about that. Uh, and this typically results in losing uneven. But if they use Geralt um, early, it means your weeping willow... Oak, Skaggs, your other defender. When they do get big, they can't remove it. So it's not the end of the world. I've won games with this deck, a card down. This deck outputs a ton of points. I've won games where I'll go in on even on round three and I'll win by 20 or 30 points. This deck outputs a ton of points. Um, and it's doing really, really well. Yeah. Uh, in terms of countering this deck, try to win coin flip uh, and try to win on even. That's all I can advise you to do. Uh, Losing coin flip against this deck is rough. There's, there's no question about it. Losing coin flip against this deck is very hard. Uh, it makes it very hard to beat the deck. Yeah. So um, I'll, I'll, I guess if you're also having struggling uh, struggles with the deck, you run Geralt. Geralt's a really good card against this deck. Uh, and Scorch is really good if you're playing Ethne. Anyways, don't really want to go uh, too much more into it. It is a pretty straightforward Phil Evangel list. Um, I do recommend you give it a try. It is good. It's a, it's a strong Squirtle deck. Um, so yeah. Hope you guys enjoy the games, and I'll see you guys on the next one. All right, all right. So Willow's actually okay in this deck. The idea is only one of your treants will die. Yeah? Yeah. You guys see how the ground shakes when he walks? Wait, do the mountains move in the background? What the? Holy shit. He's so thick, he moves mountains. <laughs> this is the one thick boy. Be nice. We'll probably see Brock uh, cucumbers here. 
Bird started singing just as you started the game. Is this a sign? Yeah, I'm, uh... I'm a Disney princess. I mean, it's corrected boost this, right? Like, I didn't need a skag that big. I'm a Disney princess. Princess... Pumpkin. Princess... Princess... I don't know. What's gonna be my princess name? Princess... Hmm... Never smuggled? No, nah, because he's just gonna dragoon it. It doesn't actually matter. Onward, Fryhead! Princess Lady Pumpkin. Princess Willow. There we go. That's my nickname. Princess or er, Princess Willow. I like it. I mean the hand's fine. Got a bunch of dwarfy cards. Yeah. Right. Princess Pompetta? No. No. No Princess Pompetta. Princess Lana Del Tay Tay. <laughs> oh? Wait. I'm not getting blood, am I? You would never play... No, that's actually not necessary. Eh. Am I getting bled? I don't know. We'll see. Special prize, just for you, love. Hmm. We'll see. Well, it, well, well, depending on what he plays here, I will decide whether or not we're getting bled. Cause we're losing one point every every turn we wait. We're losing a point. Princess Pumpers. All right, we're getting bled. Alright, we're gonna play the Jabati boy. This is the Jabati boy. Well, it's not really a boy. Don't worry about it. Don't question it. Jabati boy. Now he passes because he got my Philavandrel out. Oh, okay. No pass. to Imperial Arses. I want to play this on the pass. That's kind of the idea. Is this enough on the pass? Yeah, it's funny. Why are we question marking? Why is the music so monk s? Is this monk s? Do you guys think this music is monk s? I think the music is fine. I wouldn't classify it as monk s. I think it's fine. Phila like gets blood all the time in high rankings. Yep. That's why Phila Vandral is typically not really a well received leader. It's okay. I think Dana's just strictly better though. Alright, if he pop that, it means there's a decent chance that he can't pop my cock fist. I mean, he has that thing. He can kill it if he really wants to. Right, and this is the problem with, like, this card. Like, this card's really good in the long round three, but I can't even bank. I can't even guarantee, like, long round threes. Right. We got our carryover. Music is good. Yeah, it's relaxing. I think it's fine. Uh, we're gonna open with Willow, because we need it ticking as soon as possible. We're hoping to draw Triumphor and our other Willow boy. Uh, I can't boost this. Drop the Dragoon first. Okay, I mean... What Squaytail card do I need to move? Nothing. This is just strictly better, because it can be, like, engine bait. Sure. Alright, we drew both. That's good. Alright, let's get him going. But they need five turns to go off, so I need to blow this early. We music is bad. Nah, the music's fine. Too bloody long. 
Did you already play Volunteers? You've played Volunteers, so I don't need to archer that. We can we can play this and like I don't know, base some engine removal out. Oh, I can't track. actually boost this, but he doesn't know that. Crew did. Thank you for the four months. Welcome back, sir. Appreciate it. They can hide, but there is no escape. Can we get some poggers in chat, boys? It's getting pretty decent value. Oh no! Alright, am I playing around second Scorch? Does Pumpkin play around second Scorch? I didn't think so. Like, there's no reason to do this. It just doesn't play around COC, so we play it far right. Gags? Probably, yeah. Either way, we play this far right and just damage. I don't know, how big is the Skags? Let's say it's 11, 19, 23, plus 4. We win. It's like worst case scenario at 11. We still win. GG. Are, are you gonna blow all three? Okay, there we go, there we go. Feel the inner BM! There we- yes! There we- nice! I didn't eat my breakfast, which was two pieces of bread. Oh, it's really hard. Pride is all we've left. It's like soft on one side and then really stale on the other side. Meh. I need to hope he doesn't have Geralt. Not the archer. At least it's not predatory dive. Nobody plays predatory dive. Don't you bait me, chat. You're not supposed to go below seven, but I will auto lose the game. I don't know. Every card deeper that I go here is just asking to lose harder. YouTube video incoming? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'll do a video on this. I've been, I, I've kind of skipped like two days from YouTube because, well, I don't actually have a good reason. It's just bad excuses. Um, 
I'm just gonna take the pass. I'm not gonna get greedy and keep going. The only reason to continue going there is if I think I can win the round. I don't think I can win the round. We needed to set these up much earlier. We might be able to get the crone. No, we won't get the crone out. Please COC, it's interesting. No, we do get the crone damage out, it's good. We're gonna have to snap Fella. We're gonna have to draw pretty decently here. Good. Good. Oh, good. Yeah, I mean, it's a card. It's a slow card. I mean, it's a six point card with this. Oh. We need to get this going immediately. Can't dilly dally. Time I thought you some respect. Ah, shit. We'll pay men back for the persecution! Hey, watch your step! There's no chill. My biggest unit is an 8. If I can kill this... We can rip an 8 out. We'll be in a good spot. Why not boost COG? What? KOB? When? What do you mean? I don't know what you mean. I'm not sure I understand. With Matron? Because, the reason is, is because I knew that this Agitator would go on my back row, and because I only have one of these, I need to play a card every single turn. Right? So, like... Because I know Agitators are coming out, I need this boosting to be going off. Every turn. Whereas, if I play it on the front row, I can't play Agitator, because you can't play Agitator front row. I mean, you can, but... No reason to boost this, because if he has a Cyclops, he has a Cyclops, not gonna play around it. Here's the pass. Do I need it larger than nine? He already played... Okay. Question is, does he run COC and Geralt? Why not? Because they're expensive? Nine and, what, 11? I don't know, he has leader, but like, I have a shit ton of carryover. I have pumpkin, I don't know, draw a smuggle or something. These are not smugglers. Okay. Humans, no species more alright. Fucking last drop out of me. He never played Riders. We can actually deny Riders. It's pretty good. Good damage. Slow. 
slaughter them to a man! I'd love to be able to kill one of these, but I can't. His last card has to basically be exactly Geralt. Is Geralt even enough with leader? 3, 11, 23. No. 32. We still win even if his last card is Geralt or Professional. Cool. Is Weeping Willow actually good? I mean, in theory it is. Right? Weeping Willow in a, like, a deck that doesn't play Defenders or Oak is bad because it just gives your opponent tall removal. But if you're playing a bunch of cards that get really tall, like uh, Defenders, like it just should be okay. Keep a stiff neck. Like, it's good if you draw it in your opening hand. It's similar to Skags. It basically just gives you another hand buff target for Smugglers, Cobb, and uh, uh, Ithlin, which isn't ever a bad thing, per se. That's a very green hand. Like, super duper green. Look how green this shit is. Hey, right, turn one smack. I don't know. Does Bushwalk play Geralt? I, I guess we'll find out. I have no idea. Don't you want to use your boost on other cards? Like what? I'm not sure what you mean. What other cards do I want to boost? I hate that this boosts agitators. It agitates the shit out of me. Uh -huh. The dwarves fight. Ah, the fish person leaks. We're the best regiment in the whole plowing north. You guys like my joke? I think it was really funny. No, it was a pretty shitty joke. Coexistence, my ass. Not the point. So if he has Geralt, he'll play Geralt here, because it means I can't pass. It's a really good play. Skags, Dragon, Gaben, Big Shield, Dwarfs. Dragon? Dragon? What dragon am I boosting? There's no dragon that I need to boost. Big Shieldy Dwarfs? What, these guys? Yeah, but, like, my point is that you don't, right, so, yeah, in a perfect world where you draw all of those in the same hand, sure, maybe, but, like, the odds of that happening are very low. Also, smugglers just randomly boost shit in your hand, so if you hit, like, a proc or two on Weeping Willow, it's never bad. What are we debating here, Bushwick? Let it be. That's what I thought. This play tells me that, like, he has no interest in playing this round out. It's good hand. I got the good old one, too. It's just an extra boost target. I don't know. Like, yeah, I've had games where it's just a five, but it's not the end of the world. Alright, you got five damage out of him? If he has muzzle, I'm gonna baby rage. Baby rage. Muzzle into ale? No, you don't have to ale it. Because resilience is a, uh, a, a, 
Because resilience is a status, lock doesn't counter it. So if he muzzles this, he just gets five carry over. He doesn't have to unlock it. Muzzle is like the best card in the game against Gabor because you take your opponent's resilience and you make it your resilience. It's insanely good. Alright, he doesn't have it. Well, I mean, he could just kill it next turn for three damage. I really like those filler decks. They're unique to play. Yeah, it is unique to play. That's true. I think Gimpy. I mean, the nine five carryover is fine. Roughly five because I have dwarfs. All right, pumpkin. I want Ithlin. That's fine. That's good. All right, we don't need the trick in. Looks good, sir. I mean, this is pretty good, but it's not happening. A horn. Mm, he was playing Pitfall two days ago. This is technically my worst card in my hand. Cause it's cause like okay. Sure, if Hawker Smuggler one and eight rolls this, it's better. But the reality is, A, that's not happening. I mean, I guess it could. Uh, or, or 1 and 9, whatever. Um, but when I play this card, it's instantly going to get moved or Dragoon. So, like, it, like, I'm only expecting one tick out of this. I'm not expecting anything more. So, like, hoping that this... That's a interesting play. That's a really unfortunate boost. Literally every other card other than Ida is better. I'd even argue Ida is better to hit. Never lose coin flip. We lost coin flip this game. Same music every day. I haven't played this music in like a month. Play Skoy until 90% of the time. Can't argue with that. It says reality every five seconds. Yeah, I do. I do. You're not wrong. Never had your kneecaps broken. Cushing. Why is he leaving the smuggler up? I didn't understand. I mean, I like free points. Free points are cool. I, I'm not gonna complain about free points.
Oh, he finally did it. Erden incoming. Chat, nobody plays Erden. Stop. Stop with this meme. Incoming Erden. Wee. This is the thing as Erden. Boy finisher. Yep. Boy finisher indeed. Your best will go. How'd you know? Use pit in hand? Of course, he played Gambit. You only play four traps. So he has to have pit in hand. Last rate. Last rate plus crushing? He played last rate? I guess we'll find out in a second. And he just wants to maximize Guess crushing here. Okay. This is worth 14, this is worth 13. So we play this. I'm gonna sack Ithlin into my pit, or into his pit. His hand is Skag's pit. Because he hasn't played a dwarf yet. Is there a consideration here? I don't know. I mean, he's considering it. I know it's Pit. It has to be Pit. He's playing Gambit. <laughs> There's three traps on the board. White cross and white light is nine. 